Around about 15 years ago, I was in a relationship with a South Asian woman, um, and uh, she wasn't a Muslim, by the way, she was a Christian, and the relationship was problematic. Um, some people may be familiar with it, uh, with the circumstances surrounding it. A lot of what we did as a couple had to be done furtively behind her father's back. Um, her mother seemed to be okay with the fact that we were a couple, but everyone dreaded what would happen when the old man found out. Well, when the old man found out, um, the result was so much pressure that the relationship was pretty much wrecked. Um, I don't feel any bitterness about this, because it didn't entirely surprise me that that was going to happen. Now, the reason for this is, again, somewhat typical of these sorts of relationships. Um, it's a great disrespect to your father to do this in the South Asian culture, to have a relationship behind his back, even though he was a fairly liberal fellow, and I actually liked him when I met him. But in the South Asian community, in, I suppose, the Middle Eastern community as well, there is the underlying sort of assumption that the people from those regions in the world occupy some sort of moral high ground. In other words, yes, um, white people or Westerners are good at certain things, but they're fundamentally less moral than we are, and I don't mean that in a harsh way. It's like, I, I, I'm okay with living among them and living next to them, and I don't want to alter the way they are, but I don't want that kind of thing under my roof. And not only that, there are issues of male ego involved, i.e., um, as long as I get to be the deciding one, even if it's just officially, who my daughter marries, uh, I'm happy with the situation. In other words, um, even if just for appearances sake, he gets to decide who marries his daughter, even though the decision is really made and out of his hands, he may come to accept it. His honor, his... Um, ego has not been offended, his pride, whereas we were furtive about it, and it burst upon him, and he didn't like it one little bit. And again, this assumption that my daughter is starting to behave like them was very much um, in evidence in all of this. I did get a chance to peer, in other words, into the private lives of the South Asian community. I could see how their family politics worked. I could see how uh, their values may have changed as a result, or have been challenged as a result of coming to Canada, and how they reacted to it. The woman I was dating at the time grew up in Kuwait, but came to adulthood in Canada, so she was really more Western and Canadian than her father was. Her father was from India, and... Uh, had formed, his, his entire character had formed whole there. So he couldn't adapt to the point uh, of accepting the situation in the same way that she could. Now the reason why I bring this in is to illustrate how problematic the entire issue of honor and family politics is going to be with regard to the assimilation of the South Asian and Middle Eastern communities into Western society. We've seen the most spectacular evidence of this in Canada, at least so far, with the high-profile Shafia case, where a man has recently been convicted of murdering um, four members of his family over an issue that we would call honor, although a lot of people would say that that's not exactly honorable conduct. But from this fellow's cultural matrix, from the way that he thinks as a result of his entire upbringing, his character and all this sort of thing, all the influences that have ever played upon him. What was happening to him with his daughters dating people behind his back was simply intolerable. It was simply too much for him to accept. Now, I'm quite certain that the overwhelming majority of Canada's South Asians and Middle Eastern people were horrified by what this fellow had done, but there was an element of sympathy for the plight that he found himself in. Thank God that this hasn't happened to me. Now again, that to me represents a fundamental difference between the modern Western way of thinking and the traditional Eastern way of thinking. 
to us that looks like um, overreaction, uh, a psychotic overreaction to murder your daughters and your wife to something that really shouldn't make that much of a difference in the grand scheme of things. That's not the sort of thing that a Canadian or a natural-born Canadian would find that difficult to come to terms with. At the very worst, he might disown that member of his family that had done this. Uh, but even that would is, is seen generally as an extreme step to take. To many people from that part of the world, it's a horrible dilemma that they just pray does not happen to them because they wouldn't know how to deal with it. They certainly wouldn't actually go to the extremes of this uh, psychopath, um, Shafia, but it would still be a terribly disruptive thing in their lives that could ruin their lives. And now, again, it comes to a question of, do you control your surroundings? Can you control your surroundings? Or do you control yourself? the jihad versus sharia subject comes up again because <clears throat> the underlying thinking behind enforced family honor i'm not even saying honor killings here just enforced family honor is that appearances are everything and the actual underlying reality behind it is unimportant or at least relatively unimportant if I can keep up a false front, then that automatically makes me a moral person. Again, it's it's sort of axiomatic thinking, or it was axiomatic thinking, that South Asian people, Middle Eastern people, are simply more moral than white people, um, that they have more honor. That ha has recently been spectacularly challenged in the Shafia case, because the muted but scathing criticism of this sort of thing that has finally come to the fore in the mainstream media in Canada. Um, <clears throat> in other words, people are finally finding the words to express without being offensive, but just the words to express mainstream Canadian reaction to this are finally getting through, I think, to the, the, the communities involved. And they're starting to see that maybe, in this case, the mainstream Canadian community might have something um, on us here. Mainstream Canadian thinking is that to kill your family members is one of the worst possible immoral, disgraceful, dreadful, disreputable things you could possibly do. It is up there with being a pedophile. It's that revolting to us. And we don't really want to judge South Asian or Middle Eastern thinking for this, but we want to point it out to them just how hard this is going to be for us to accept. In fact, it's just not going to happen that, that we ever come to terms with this kind of thing. And it's also a light bulb moment in that the South Asian and Middle Eastern communities are starting to realize that in a sense, they've kind of deluded themselves in telling themselves that they are more moral than everyone else, that maybe it was just this cultural reflex called denial which made them believe that they were, or they told themselves that they were, whereas they knew in the back of their own minds that all they did was they hid all these problems better. And that some, or a lot of thoughtful South Asian people are now saying, maybe this is not such a good idea to bottle everything up inside the walls of our own houses because it explodes spectacularly and, for the community, humiliatingly. Maybe there is something to be said about a little bit of airing of one's dirty laundry in public, i.e., I'm a human being too. Life is not fabulous inside my four walls. I have family problems, and that doesn't make me a less honorable person. Again, Sharia says you control people's actions. You control the facade of society to make it look as though, or seem as though, it's a very moral place. But what's going on in people's hearts could be utterly and totally rotten. It's being, it's being left completely unaddressed. What is actually going on in terms of morality 
that's, I think, something that is now the sort of debate that's taking place, probably privately, within the Islamic and South Asian and Middle Eastern communities in Canada. Are we really that much more moral than everybody else? Now, this is a hard thing for them to do, because for as long as they can possibly remember, it has been axiomatic that they are the moral people, that white people, for all their other strengths, are fundamentally morally shoddy people. So there's a great resistance, a great temptation to not want to go down that kind of path, that kind of thinking to say that maybe we are just as moral or immoral as everybody else. But the, the hermetically sealed culture of denial is being forced open. It's being forced open by free press, inquisitive press, and the normal human love of scandal. I think it's a healthy thing, and I think it also says that um, in the real world and long term, substance is much more important than form. Jihad, inner correction of your own moral failings, self-correction, is far more healthy than trying to control what's going on in the outside world around you. In fact, trying to control the outside world is futile, and it can lead to explosions like the Shafia case. Thank you.